we're all producers here, right? And one thing that all producers love is a filter or perhaps filtering because filtering is one of the more powerful tools that we have access to in order to shape the sounds that we wanna hear. And these days, it's pretty easy to come across emulations of analog filters, but it kind of led me to wonder if there are situations in the beat making process where you'll want to use analog filters or if a clean digital filter is pretty much just fine for everything. So I set up a little bit of a, an experiment for us to test our ears and find out. You guys ready to nerd out? Let's do it. I've set up a few things for us to listen to in order to evaluate how the filters are changing the source material. So for you Ableton users, I'm using auto filter for all of the emulations of analog filters um, that you get from this dropdown, which you may or may not have explored here. And I've essentially duplicated each of the source material tests into different analog emulations. So we're gonna use five different filter types in this test. Four of them are from Ableton and one of them is from Arteria just for fun. The first one is just a clean digital filter. It's not gonna be any non-linearities. Is gonna be kind of our basis for comparison. The second one we're gonna use is an OSR circuit, which is an SVF or state variable filter. And it says that the resonance is limited by a unique hard clipping diode. Okay, so that's a hard clipping one. We're also gonna use uh, an MS2, which I think is based on the Korg MS20 filter. And this one uses soft clipping to limit the resonance. The fourth one we're gonna use is the PRD circuit, which is a ladder filter, which I believe was invented by Moog. Now, just for fun, we're also going to perform the test with our Arturia's mini filter, just to see how it compares to the PRD from Ableton and see if we like how it sounds on the uh, source material. So for this little experiment, I kind of wanted to exaggerate the effects of the filter by using some pretty extreme settings. So you can see there's a lot of movement in what's happening in the uh, cutoff frequency. And we're using a low pass filter that's at 24 decibels per octave and it has a resonance of 75%. I didn't want to use anything close to 100% because I didn't want the filters to start self oscillating. So for the first part of the test, we're just going to use some noise to help us identify really what's going on with the frequency spectrum and how the filters are reacting to the source material. Okay, so here's what the noise sounds like without anything. All right, so let's take a listen to how these filters sound. <laughs> wow, that Arturia filter is pretty striking. So what stuck out to you guys right away? For me, it was the fact that this clean filter was super harsh sounding at the cutoff frequency, which I really didn't like. The other thing I noticed was that the OSR filter and Arturia's mini filter sounded much better. I think it's because of the way that the resonance limiting was applied compared to that just sounds kind of unpleasant to my ears. Now, of course, we're not just like listening to noise when we're making music. We're actually listening to, well, music. <laughs> so for the next part of the test, I made a little just very basic drum loop that sounds like this. And we're just gonna listen to how the filter reacts to the transients that are inside of the drum loop. So what struck me about this one was how unmusical some of those filters sounded to me. Like they were just doing their own thing and they weren't really reacting to the information. So if the transients landed on a weird spot in where the filter was, it was like, oh, well, whatever. I'm just gonna do my own thing. And again, you know, if you compare the clean to the OSR filter, It just creates such a different feeling, doesn't it? Now, the third sort of test I wanna do is to just run this over some synth chords, some basic synth chords, just like a sawtooth. Cause that will give us a good indication about how it will sound in you know, a context that we would come across a lot, which is manipulating the filters of a synth. So here we go. Was 
And for this one, I have to say I wasn't as particular about the OSR as, as compared to, you know, the PRD or the MS2. They each kind of had different characteristics that I liked. Um, if you wanted the filter cutoff to be a more prominent part of the sound, maybe you want to use the PRD or the MS2. If you wanted it to be a little bit more subtle and a little bit softer, then just stick with the OSR or perhaps use the softest of all of them, which would have been Arturia's mini filter. I really, I actually liked all of them except for clean. <laughs> I guess the conclusion of this is that I'm not gonna use the clean filter very much, at least for this type of thing. I wanna say that I've used the OSR filter in Ableton for most things that I've done. I just have always kind of liked how it sounded. Having done this test, I really like how it sounds on the source material. Well, that and the Arturia's mini filter. Maybe part of that is because I'm used to how it sounds. Maybe I just prefer a little bit of resonance limiting, but either way, I feel a little bit vindicated. <laughs> But just talking in terms of the most useful applications for these, I think for more like creative endeavors, like when you have an LFO on a synth or you just have like a really active filter going, I would probably go with the noisiest and most pleasant slash musical sounding filter, which to me is the OSR. But for more like general sculpting, you know, like the type of work you do in mixing and mastering, I think that the clean filter would be great or perhaps even the PRD. Now, of course, you're not gonna have the filters <laughs> be doing the same types of things. And certainly the resonance isn't gonna be as high, but this is just to exaggerate all of the interesting details about how these filters operate given the source material, which kind of gives us clues about how they can be used in a musical context. Most importantly though, I'd love to hear what you guys think about analog emulations of filters and how you use them in your beat making or even mixing and mastering. Do you guys think that they matter at all or do you just prefer to use clean digital filters? All right, we'll see you guys very soon. Maybe even for another ear test and experiment. All right, take care. Peace.